Alrighty, here is a quick video of a budget laptop and a more high performance laptop. So I'm just going to go ahead and compare the two. Um, and then you can pick on which one, you know, would you rather spend the money on. But I think the first thing that's important is to kind of understand what is a budget laptop. Basically, a budget laptop is any computer that's right around $1,000 or less that essentially you can game on. So on the left here, we have a Dell G3 3590 model. This is 2019 model. And then we have an Alienware M17R4 2021 model. And interestingly enough, there's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, let's start off with ports. So if we look at the G3, we have power, USB Type-C, HDMI, a USB 3.1 um, port, Ethernet, and a headphone microphone jack. Nothing on the front, nothing on the back. On the side, we have two more USB ports, a Kensington lock, and an SD card reader. Opening it up, we have a 15.6 inch screen. This is a 60 hertz screen. Now I believe the newer G3s actually have a 120, I wanna say, in it. Um, so definitely a great improvement from this particular one. And uh, you get a full keyboard and a numpad. And this thing, you know, it doesn't sound too terrible. Key travels a little bit further than what I'd like, but for the most part, it, it's pretty comfortable to, uh, to type on. Has a fairly large size trackpad. It works pretty good. And then we look at the Alienware. And let's start off with the side. So we have our Ethernet port, we have a USB 3.0 port, or 3.1, and a headphone microphone jack. And we have a Kensing, or a little lock thing right there. Uh, again, nothing going on in the front. The side, we have a micro SD card two more USB ports. On the back, we have our power, we have our graphics amplifier, we have a Thunderbolt USB Type-C port, mini display port, and HDMI. So really, the only difference between the two as far as IO goes is the graphics amplifier port and the mini display port and the Thunderbolt port. So, but this is still a USB type C port as well. So really you're only losing two ports with this. So honestly, there, there's not much difference as far as connectivity goes. Um, I believe this one was right around $1,200, but it was for $999 on sale at Best Buy. Uh, both, for the most part, have a one-touch open. It does lift up a little bit, but they do both open. As far as the screen flex, there's not really, there's not really a whole lot. And here, there's quite a bit more. Um, as far as opening it, you know, and moving it, it's not it has a little bit of a wiggle, but it, it's not really going to go anywhere. And then if we do the Alienware, that for sure isn't going anywhere. Uh, as far as build quality goes, I'm not sure if this camera is going to be able to pick it up, but there is a little bit of flexing on the keyboard. You know, I'm pushing fairly hard, but the average typing, you're probably not going to really see much. It is very plasticky, and as you can tell, very prone to fingerprints, but it doesn't have a cheap plastic feel. It, it has a pretty um, nice feel to it. 
And on the lid, we do have a little bit of plastic flex in. So let's talk about the flaws of this thing. And that's gonna be the back vent. So when this computer's open, you'll see here that it will blow on here. Now this hinge so far has been the best hinge. It's the third hinge I've had on it. And so far, this one seems a little bit more uh, easier to open and close. There's very little resistance as far as opening it. It opens, it doesn't even lift the back of the computer up or the front of the computer up anymore. Um, so I think this hinge might be the one that lasts the longest. I'm hoping the previous hinge before this literally lasted two months under very minimal use. And then um, this one's been used pretty heavily. And before that, it, it went almost a year. So as far as customization goes, there's no RGB or anything outside of the keyboard being a blacklit blue. Uh, with it being backlit, it is a blue light that can either be on, off, or dimmed. There's no other color choice. There's no lighting around it. it it's just the keyboard. And there's no indicator lights to tell you the computer's on just the keyboard, but the keyboard light goes off after a little bit. So that was one of my complaints with it. Looking at the Alienware, um, there is really no flex whatsoever. The little bit of, of movement you see is just the rubber feet being pushed down. Uh, but as far as the deck flex, they're, they're really, there's very little to pretty much nothing. Um, everything feels pretty solid you could tell just by the build quality, you know, everything is the way it should be. And I've heard some stories where people talk about they got it. I think I watched one video where the screen was clicking. Um, I've seen some videos and heard and read through the comments where some people have gotten this thing and pretty much out of the box, the thing thr throttled down. I don't want to say this one's really doing that too badly because even before I undervolted it, it would get hot, but never once did it ever drop frames at all. Um, it would kind of cap out. The most drop I would get was maybe 10 frames per second that, you know, that would drop. Uh, some of the videos I've seen out there that throttling goes down to where games are damn near unplayable. And honestly, if I didn't even have my frame counter, I don't think I would notice any any play difference so as far as the build quality and everything goes I'd say Dell's done a pretty good job I mean there's a couple other computers out there that I think are are pretty good um, the Acer Predator Helos that is a fairly decent computer um, I wouldn't really call that one budget. Amazon has it for about fifteen hundred, and then the website Newegg will have it for about fourteen ninety nine. So you're still you're a little bit over that thousand dollar mark. Um, so I would say that's maybe a mid range more so. Um, another one that we have here is going to be the MSI Bravo. That's a fairly decent one for eight ninety nine. Um, the Acer Nitro Five I know is one that just came out. Um, HP Omen lineups are pretty good. Uh, there's MSI Alpha 15. Uh, so all of these computers here that I'm listing off are, are considered budget computers. Um, if you're curious, the article I'm reading off of is the best laptops of 2021. Um, but here we can just kind of take a look. We got the Acer Predator. I didn't click on the pros or the cons or anything. So when it comes to budget gaming laptops, the real question, or not really question, but the real thing you want to ask yourself is, is it worth spending three grand versus a grand? Or, you know, even six, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine dollars opposed to something starting at $2,500 or more? It's really going to be up to you. Um, I think 
the number one thing to keep in mind is what games do you want to play? Obviously, both computers will play games. Um, it almost looks like this screen's more vibrant than this one. But I think they both look good. Uh, I will say this. This one does look a lot better than the original one since it's been replaced twice now. The other one was very washed. This one seems a little bit more vibrant. But uh, as far as performance goes, this one has an i5, the ninth generation with a GeForce uh, GTX 1660 Ti graphics card. A lot of the laptops I just mentioned, you're going to see them with the 1650, or, or I think I've even seen some, I think, I, th I think one said 1060, but usually the 1650 or 1660, um, you'll see. And then occasionally you'll find a 2060, uh, but for the most part, you're, you're going to be on those older cards and they still will do good. Like this thing here. Still plays Grand Theft Auto V pretty much in max settings. Plays Red Red Redemption. Um, not on max settings, but on high settings. And it still does a pretty good job at frame rate. Uh, plays Doom Eternal, no problem. And, um, you know, it does pretty good. There's no lag. It, it actually does really well. There's no frame rate drop or anything. Um, I was quite impressed with this. Plays Fortnite. Plays pretty much everything you would expect it to play. Um, it plays Warzone, and everything for the most part is on max settings. Now, this has been upgraded to 32 gigs, but uh, for the most part, it does pretty good. Compared to this, I'd say they're pretty much, I don't want to say equal, because that would be a, a lie, of course, but they're, I would be happy if I didn't have this one and had to play on this. I really wouldn't complain too much. The only issues I had with it were the screen and I just wanted something bigger. So overall, it's going to be up to you guys on what price point you want to look at. Um, I'd say in today's market, these are going hot just because there is a lot of discounts. They have the latest graphics card in them and they're using a lot of good um, quality chips. So this has the i7 in it with the um oh god i i keep forgetting i i think it's the 10870 i think or 108 i forget which one it is let's just check yep the 10870h and this one i believe has a 93 uh, I want to say H, maybe, uh, processor in it. Yep, 93H, so 2.4 and 2.2. So actually the base clock speed is faster on this one than it is on this one. But uh, a lot of the newer computers, the budget ones that you can find out there will have AMD processors in it, which will actually make them a little bit cheaper than Intel. Intel is a little bit more expensive. There's, of course, the argument of which runs better. I've seen people say Intel runs better for gaming, but AMD for more production. And there's just a huge argument out there. But the more customization you get with something this expensive is you get, you know, you can change the color of the LED lighting. Um, back here can be changed. But uh, overall performance, you know, as far as games go, they they really, you know, this thing still definitely can get the job done. Now, can you competitively play on it? I'd say it depends on the game. But of course, this thing is going to run a lot smoother and a lot faster. And I think the build quality is safe to say that when you spend more, you get a higher and better build quality than if you have something that is aimed for budget. As far as the longevity of things, I've had this thing since 2020. It's, I mean, the biggest issue that it's had has been this display, this hinge, and mainly right here. 
if it wasn't for the hinge, I'd say this computer's been an excellent computer. As far as the Alienware, I really don't have any complaints about it other than the uh, Alienware Command Center being a little bit of a, a pain in the butt. But as you see here, it's loaded right away. As long as I don't have Kaspersky's loaded, it loads every time. I have not had one hiccup yet now that I've discovered that Kaspersky's is the issue. It's just important that you make sure you close Kaspersky's within the first minute or so of loading the computer. Otherwise, it uh, may have a little bit of an issue trying to load into the command center. Otherwise, if I have Kaspersky's open, it's kind of going to be hit or miss on the command center, whether or not it's going to work or not. And um, this actually has the command center as well. And it does that a lot. Really, the only thing in the command center I do here is enable the G mode, which kicks the fans up at a higher speed. And I don't know if that's really considered a muck switch or not, but that is really the main differences between a budget laptop and a high end. They're, they're really all not that far apart from each other. Just one has faster and better components in it than the other. And I think the biggest issue, or not issue, but the biggest, I guess it can be an issue that you're gonna run into with some budget ones, is their thermal cooling. This thing does run hot. I'd say the hottest I've seen it is about 92, 93. For the most part, it stays right around the upper 80s. So it doesn't do too terribly bad. On a cooling pad, it does a little bit better. Um, I never enable G mode, so I'm sure it probably would do even better because it spins the fans faster. As far as the Alienware goes, these are known to run hot. I've undervolted mine, as I've mentioned in several videos, and it uh, does pretty good. Last night I was playing Need for Speed Heat, and uh, the highest the temperature thing said it got was 89 degrees. So I was very pleased with the overall performance. Frame rate was all the way, depending on the weather in the game, um, most of the time the frame rates we saw were in the upper 80s to 90s. Um, and then when everything was clear and it was sunny and I wasn't in a bunch of uh, grassy area, we were hitting about 100. And that's on maxed, maxed out everything, maxed out. This thing on Need for Speed Heat, with it maxed out, it does lag. I'd say the FPS is right around 30 to 40-ish. Um, turn the settings down to, I think, from ultra to, like, high, and then it's, it's doing about 60. So that is my video on the difference, key differences between budget computers and a more expensive computer.